हेलो हाय एवरीवन वेलकम बैक टू आर चैनल लेटर अंडर रेटेड होप यू आर ऑल डूइंग वेल टुडे वी आर गोना चेक आउट अनदर वीडियो ऑफ अक्षत व्हिच इज टाइटल्ड एज इंप्रूव योर मनी करियर एंड लाइफ फॉलो दिस मैथ रूल्स सो प्रोबेबली इज गोना टॉक अबाउट सम यूज केसेस और सम कॉमनली यूज्ड बट नॉट कॉमनली नोन लाइफ हैक्स और सम मैकेनिज्म्स और सम रूल्स व्हिच आर प्रूव्ड मैथमेटिकली एज़ वेल और दोस कुड लाइक द वैल्यू कुड बी ड्राइव्ड आउट ऑफ दोस मैथमेटिकली एज़ वेल अज्यूमिंग सम नंबर्स व्हिच इन पास्ट हैव प्रूव्ड यूजफुल टू अ लॉट ऑफ पीपल राइट टू मेजॉरिटी ऑफ द पीपल एंड एंड फॉलोइंग दोस विल बी यूजफुल इन अचीविंग मनी गोल्स फाइनेंशियल गोल्स करियर गोल्स एंड इन जनरल लाइफ गोल्स so let's jump to the video for more insights right now i have netflix i have amazon prime i have hotstar why do i have it because for me it becomes very important in fact more important to enjoy the time that i have every single day so i dedicate 8 hours for enjoyment hi everyone welcome to today's video so on today's video we are going to do a challenge the challenge is that i am going to speak about 11 life changing mathematical formulas that can help you make more money it can impact your career it can help you live a rich prosperous life if you go and implement these 11 rules or even a few of these rules for the next 3 weeks and if you do not see an improvement of 10% in your life come back and dislike this video but meanwhile please like this video and we will get the video started also a very big shout out to our sponsors for today which is ditto it is an excellent insurance buying platform more about them subsequently on the video now the reason why i am excited to shoot this video is that these 11 rules have enriched my life so i wanted to package it into one detailed video and talk to you about it i keep on referring to some of these rules in bits and pieces on my previous videos also but on this video i am going to help you develop an extensive understanding So let us get started and the first and foremost rule or mathematical rule that you need to understand is called as 80/20 rule or Pareto principle. Why is it named as Pareto principle? Because it was given by Wilfred Pareto who was an Italian economist and more commonly it is now called as 80/20 principle. So what is the meaning of 80/20 principle? In very easy to understand language it means that in order to generate 80% of the results you just simply need to put 20% of focused efforts. So let's pick a practical example to understand the 80/20 rule. So let's assume that you are studying in college. You have not studied much for the last five six months. Semester exams are there. Now everyone is sitting on your head that hey, how will you pass the exam? Even you are very bothered. Your family members say that you keep on playing video game. You don't do anything. This that. So now what is your best strategy to clear the exam? The answer is use Pareto principle. So how would you use Pareto principle? Very simple. That you can go and solve the last ten year paper. There is kunji or key. You can buy that. Solve the last ten year papers, and most likely you are going to clear the exam. So that is called as putting in twenty percent of directed efforts to generate eighty percent of the results. And let me know in the comment box how many of you have done the same. Now this rule is applicable not just in terms of clearing semester exams. It is also applicable in the stock market. For example, many a times you would have heard that retail investors are very scared of investing their money. Now ask yourself why are they scared of investing the money? The answer will be very obvious that many of us are looking for perfect opportunities to invest. Our objective is that okay, if I am putting hundred rupees in the stock market, then I will only invest if by next year I will be able to make a twenty percent return at least. Only then I am going to invest. Otherwise, I am going to keep on sitting on my cash. And as a result, majority of the retail investors do not end up participating in the stock market at all. What is the wrong thing that we are doing here? We are trying to become perfectionists. So please abandon the perfectionism rule. Please do not believe that I do not know enough about stock market. How will I invest? There is so much risk. This that. Just follow 80/20 principle. How you can follow 80/20 rule? Very easy. What is the 20% right thing that you can do? You can go and identify stocks that are revenue generating, profit generating. Even if you do not have the time to do it, just simply do index based investing. So this 80/20 rule is applicable in terms of clearing exams, investing in the stock market, improving your career outcomes. You name it, and this rule is applicable. So the bottom line. is that don't try to be a perfectionist just put in 20% of dedicated focused effort and leveraged effort in certain aspect in which you are trying to improve and that will generate 80% of the results for you so with that said let us move on to the second rule now many a times you would have felt that hey i want to develop a new habit 
for example reading or writing or i want to become more active on social media or i want to learn coding but the problem is that the moment you start working towards your goal of losing weight or learning to code etc you will be super active for the first 3 4 days after that hawa will go out and you will stop working towards your goal now why does that happen that happens because you are not able to sustain a habit now why are you not able to sustain a habit because you do not know the mathematical formula of sustaining a habit so what is that mathematical formula the mathematical formula is called as 2190 rule so 2190 rule is a magical formula what it simply says is that try to pursue an activity for 3 weeks for example let's say that you are trying to lose weight and you have decided that i am going to do 10 minute hit exercises every day in the morning or 10 minute yoga every day in the morning so start doing it for the first 21 days you are going to hate that activity just tell your brain that hey it is going to be a stressful exercise for me but i am going to do it so do it for 21 days just by pushing yourself by telling your brain because your brain will become active and it will understand that okay you know what this is going to be painful for me you are preparing your brain for bad news so tell your brain that 21 days are going to be horrific you keep on doing that exercise for 21 days in 21 days that particular activity turns into a habit now start doing that activity for 90 days now why am i saying 90 days because there is a three step process here one is that you do not like that activity then you turn that into a habit in 20 one days once you pursue that habit for 90 days then that activity becomes something that you start to enjoy or at least not hate so from not liking an activity you have turned that into something that you somewhat enjoy or at least not hate which is a big achievement now this needs to be done little bit thoughtfully so for example if you are trying to lose weight don't give yourself a 21 days target that he i am going to hit the gym and deadlift 500 kgs you are going to get crushed by dumbbells have some common sense that when you start an activity that you hate do not spend more than 10 minutes per day on it for example it could be a 10 minute gym just go to gym for 10 minutes fine do it for 21 days and on the 22nd day come back to this video dislike it in case you still completely hate going to gym so it will change i'm telling you please follow this mathematical formula to turn any activity that you hate but it is important for you into a habit building thing. so this brings us to rule number 3 which is called as 2020 rule now 2020 rule simply means that if you are investing 20000 rupees a month for a period of 20 years at a cagr of 12% then in that 20 year time frame you are going to have a corpus of 2 crore rupees now many people in the comment box will start timing that you know what inflation is going to go high what value will 2 crore have and it's very difficult to grow money at 12% etc etc okay so couple of responses here number 1 it is not difficult to grow money at 12% why because the average nifty cagr for the last 20 year has been 12.2% so this 12% argument really doesn't work second argument is about inflation so the mathematical formula that i have shown you where we have assumed that you are going to invest 20000 rupees per month even the principal amount will grow with the salary right because with inflation even your salary will rise your savings rate hopefully will rise so as a result your principal amount will rise so therefore we are discounting inflation here the objective of this 2020 formula is to help you understand and help you become a little bit optimistic about the fact that it is not difficult to become a karodpati if you are systematically investing in things properly that is the simple message that i am trying to give now a variant of this rule is called as 15 15 15 rule which means that if you invest 15000 rupees for a period of 15 years at a cagr of 15% then you get to 1 crore rupee now again there will be youtube comment warriors who will say that hey it's impossible to grow at 15% no it is not impossible to grow your money at 15% it can be done all you simply need to do is go back to rule number 1 start learning about stock investing apply 80 20 there and you will start seeing growth in the methods how you invest money So with that said let us move on to rule number 4. So rule number 4 is called as the safety net rule or it can also be termed that 6x to 12x rule. So what is the meaning of that? Let me explain you by picking two categories here. So basically what ends up happening is that many of us want to become entrepreneurs, we want to start our own businesses or we want to leave our jobs, go to Goa, settle there or go to some hill station, settle there, live a slightly more peaceful life or we want to do something in our career by taking a little bit of risk. Now if you are taking a risk then there are two sub categories that you need to remember one is that you need to create a financial safety net and you need to create a career safety net so before going to the hr throwing your laptop at him that you know what here i quit you need to at least ensure that you are financially safe and career wise you are safe so what do i mean by that and is there a mathematical formula around it let me explain 
So when it comes to financial safety net, what you need to remember at least, and this is the absolute baseline that you need to have, that you need to have saved six times or 12 times of your monthly expenses. So for example, let's say that if your monthly expense is 50,000 rupees, then you should have saved between three to six lakhs for emergency expenses. So therefore, having an emergency fund is very, very important. First, buy an insurance. This is very important because let's say if you have 10 lakhs of savings with you and some medical emergency happens and if you're uninsured, then even that 10 lakh of emergency fund can fall short. So therefore, having an insurance is literally step one. You can go check out Ditto, speak with insurance experts from there i have purchased my insurance plans for ditto so you can go and speak with insurance experts for free they do not charge even a single penny for guiding you in terms of what type of insurance you should be buying so check the links in the description box this is absolute point number one point number two related here is save between 6x to 12x of your expenses on every month basis into an emergency fund put your money in a fixed deposit please do not invest that money in the stock market or any other market so to say then comes third step which is where you start investing your money for long-term retirement, all that stuff. So I hope this financial safety net definition is clear. Now comes a related category to it, which is called as career safety net. So what is the meaning of career safety net? Career safety net means that if today you get fired from your job, then is there something that you can start doing from tomorrow onwards to start making money? That is what career freedom means. Career freedom does not mean that you have a bunch of money kept into your bank account. Yes, that is financial safety. But career safety means that you have amped up your skill set to such an extent that even if you get fired from tomorrow onwards, there is something that you can do in order to make money. Therefore, I keep on encouraging all of you to start experimenting with parallel sources of income. If over the weekend you can create your side project, get active on LinkedIn to win customers. All these basic, basic points. I have made several videos on it. You can go and check some of my previous videos. Please learn about these two, three basic things and utilize your weekends well in order to generate what? In order to generate that career safety. Having that career safety is very, very important for all of us, especially during these uncertain times where companies churn rate has become very high. So then come rule number five, which is called as saving 70% of your income rule. Now your obvious question here would be that Akshat, you have spoken about four rules. All this requires so much work. I do not have time to do so much work. I want to retire at some point. What is the goal towards which I'm working? And what is that mathematical number I need to have in mind where I can technically call myself financially free or I can call myself to be retired. So we are not talking about retirement in conventional sense. We are talking about retirement from a financial freedom or job freedom sense. So this 70% savings rule is critical. And let me explain this in two, three bullet points. So number one, in order to retire, you need to understand the fact that retirement does not depend on the amount of money that you have saved. It rather depends on your monthly expenses because if you can say one crore and every year your expenses are one crore, then that corpus will get wiped out within a one year time. So retirement is more about how much you're spending now and also how much you might be spending in the future or what your lifestyle upgradation is. Are you looking to buy a bigger house, bigger car, bigger holidays, whatnot, right? So 70% of saving rule says that let's imagine that your salary is one lakh rupee and you're able to save 70% of that money. So you're able to save 70,000 hypothetically speaking and you keep on doing it year after year for the next 10 years that you are making 1 lakh rupee you are saving 70% and whatever standard of living you are currently having you do not upgrade that then theoretically you can retire so I will repeat that again if your salary is 1 lakh you are saving 70,000 and you keep on doing it for the next 10 years and if you do not undertake lifestyle upgradation that is you don't buy bigger car bigger house this that then you can theoretically retire after 10 years is 70% savings difficult of course it is very difficult. I'm not saying that you should start saving it now, but this gives you a target towards which you can start working. So now comes point number six, which is don't boil the ocean rule, because one of the key things that we need to do in order to attain financial freedom is that we need to increase our earning potential. Now, in order to increase our earning potential, we need to be a smart consumer of things, be it what we should be buying versus what we should not be buying, how we should upgrade our knowledge base, how we should expand our brain, how we should have better thought process, how we should make better decisions. So so a rule called as don't boil the ocean is very, very important. Now you see what happens is that we live in a world where there is so much information floating around. If you just open the internet, you will see 500 videos. Every day we might be consuming 10 GBs of data. 
what are we consuming here we are consuming overload of information even if you just pick one simple thread how to do nifty investing you will end up seeing 500 videos on that now you don't need to consume every piece of information out there in order to make better decisions so combine rule number one which is 80 20 rule along with the rule called as boiling the ocean boiling the ocean in simple terms means doing a phd on every topic please do not try to do phd on every topic on how to invest in nifty fund how to improve my health this that once you build that 20 percent important knowledge by following the 80 20 rule just tell yourself that any more research is called as boiling the ocean avoid doing it because this wastes a lot of time for you and time is money which brings us to the next principle which is time is much much greater than the money because think about it this way that money is almost infinite why because governments keep on printing more and more money so all you need to do is improve your career skill set become skilled and one day you will be making a lot of money money is theoretically infinite but time is finite if i give you a choice tell me in the comment box which one will you pick let's assume that you are 95 years old and you have 1 billion dollar in your bank account will you have this life or you are 30 and you have only 5 lakh rupees in your bank account do let me know in the comment box i would love to read your commentaries but the mistake that we make is that we overvalue money and undervalue time for example even if when we have wealth or money we will sometimes take actions just to save money we should not be doing it. A classic case in point is that, for example, let's say that you have to go from point A to point B. You are trying to hire an auto and that auto wala is charging you 500 rupees. Now you have the paying capacity to pay that 500 rupees and save one hour of your walking time. But what you will say is that, you know what, who should spend like 500 rupees? It is just not worth it. I would rather spend one hour going from point A to point B. Yes, if you're doing it for health reasons, some other reasons, it's different. But if you're making just a time versus money choice, probably saving that one hour might be a better choice. So Kunal Shah has said it wonderfully well that everyone should understand what is their per hour rate is. Once you figure out what your per hour rate is, you should delegate or at least try to save times on things that are not meeting your per hour standard. Which brings us to point number eight. And interestingly, this rule is called as 888 rule. So what is the meaning of 888 rule? The meaning of this 888 rule is a life rule. What in simple word it means is that you should divide your day into three spheres. One is eight hours for work, eight hours of leisure and eight hours for sleeping. Because if you step back and try to see this entire scenario that, hey, why are you watching this YouTube video? Why are you learning about investing? Why are you going to office and hustling so much? Why? Because you want to enjoy life at the end of the day or at least live a balanced Life. So always think about it from that particular equation that every day is unique. Every day you should invest some amount of time in terms of enjoying your life also. That is very, very important. For example, right now I have Netflix, I have Amazon Prime, I have Hotstar. Why do I have it? Because right now I am in a situation in my life where I've already worked very hard. So for me, it becomes very important. In fact, more important to enjoy the time that I have every single day. So I dedicate eight hours for enjoyment. Now it could be that I'm watching Netflix, Amazon Prime, this, that, or swimming, or just going around a bike, whatever, right? But the point is that I'm dedicating eight hours of my life for enjoyment every single day. Now I'm not saying that you should start doing it from very early years. You should not be doing it. You should be sensible. You should curate, but adopting this 888 philosophy becomes very important after a certain period in your life. Was I always used to be like this? The answer is no. At one point in time, I did not used to even watch TV. Why? Because I was too focused on my career. Am I not focused on my career right now? Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. But what I'm trying to tell you is that at certain stage in your life, you need to figure out a balance and adopting this mathematical formula of 888 can do wonders for you. So just to tell you a very quick story here. So I studied at INSEAD and it is a European school. So I got to engage and interact with a lot of Europeans and they used to follow this philosophy quite aggressively. So in my case, what used to happen was that since I was trained to study for exams and I wanted to top like NCAD or whatnot. So it used to surprise me that my European friends just a day before exam, they used to enjoy their life. They used to go to swimming also. They used to go clubbing also, partying also, whatnot. So I asked them that, hey, are you not worried about studying for exams? So their response was that, hey, you know what? We need to enjoy our life also. So we follow this 888 philosophy. This is where I picked this 888 philosophy from and I'm trying to imbibe it in my career. Again, a very quick disclaimer that this 888 philosophy needs to be aligned depending on the stage of life you are at. For someone in their 70s, this 888 might become only one hour of work and rest of the time for family or sleeping. And for someone who is preparing for IIT, then of course, dedicating eight hours for entertainment might be impossible. So please curate it as per your understanding. So now comes rule number nine, which is called as 4% withdrawal rule. Now, what is 4% withdrawal rule? It's a very simple rule. So let's work through an example. So let's say that you have created a corpus of one crore rupee. 
now 4% withdrawal means that you can withdraw 4 lakh rupees from it now ask yourself a question that can i live with 4 lakh rupees every single year in terms of my expenses if the answer is yes that 4 lakh rupees is enough then that 1 crore corpus is sensible for you and probably you can theoretically retire now that is again a financial freedom rule then if you say that okay i probably need 8 lakh rupees for my survival so to get to 8 lakh how much do you need you need 2 crore so 2 crore multiplied by 4% that will give you 8 lakh rupees now you would say that okay inflation will eat into it this that okay now the thing is that your corpus is not just sitting it is also generating some returns how much returns can it theoretically generate it can generate any amount of return but let's work with a simple assumption that it is going to generate 10% returns now in a country like india the inflation ranges from 4 to 7 8% right now it is high but inflation also keeps on going up and down so let's assume an average inflation of 6% so with that theory 6% goes to inflation 4% becomes your withdrawal amount this gives you a very correct idea as to how much corpus you need to create in order to have some bit of financial freedom in your life so now comes the final two rules so the next rule is about your spending habit so for example many a times we get confused that hey should i be upgrading my iphone pro plus max 15 with five lenses so we always struggle with these type of decisions that hey new phone new car this that okay if it's a pure expense what you need to remember is that if you cannot buy something twice do not buy it once that's a very simple argument people keep on making excel spreadsheet what is the pro and con of buying iphone 15 pro max with five lenses the point is that you should not be creating all those excel spreadsheets if you cannot just simply go to a shop and buy iphone 15 pro plus max or whatever the name is then you should not be doing it if you are struggling so much with that decision probably it's an indication that you should not be undertaking that expense but let me requalify that statement many people want to become tiktokers or instagramers by buying iphone if that is generating source of income for you then it is not an expense it is an investment it is okay in that respect to even take a loan to start your business so in this respect if you are buying an iphone on a loan then probably it is okay no problem there second key point that there are certain things which we consider as expenses but they are not for example many people would comment that hey i am buying a house i cannot afford to buy it twice yes we are not talking about investment here we are talking about expenses and house is not an expense it is still an investment it might be a good investment bad investment it's a topic for separate discussion but i hope that you are understanding the spirit with which i am giving you this argument that if you are looking at pure expenses then please follow a simple rule that if you cannot afford to buy something twice please do not buy it once that's a very simple thing it might hurt your ego a little bit but please remember that it is always easy to upgrade your lifestyle but very very difficult to bring it down once you get into the habit of buying iphone pro plus max 15 with five eyes or whatever you might struggle to buy an iphone with three eyes so this brings us to the last final and the most important rule and one of my favorite rules that always be conscious of improving your earning potential now what do i mean by earning potential earning potential means that right now let's say that you are making 2 lakh rupees a month which is great salary everything is hunky dory etc etc suddenly if you get fired from your job what are you going to do next it becomes a problem so always try to create parallel sources of income even if it is a small source of income it's not that big a deal one of the easiest sources of income is to create is dividend based income in case you have not watched some of my videos on this topic i will link it here please go and watch it that's a source of income similarly in my case i always focus on improving my skill set learning about new new things and starting new businesses in it for example right now i am in goa i am trying to learn more about airbnb business and i am looking to buy a few properties so i will keep you posted in case you want to learn more about it but this is an area where i am spending some of my time to create a new income stream so the point point is that no matter in which field you are always try to upskill learn new things around you because that can always lead to more income sources in a very legitimate manner so you should always be focused on creating multiple income streams and the easiest way to create multiple income streams is to upskill yourself because upskilling in simple terms means that you are cultivating the ability to add value to others and if you can keep on adding value to others they will reward you one way or the other So I hope you enjoyed the video if you did please press the like button and share it with your friends and I will see you soon So it was indeed a good video uh, the points he discussed like total 11 points or rules he discussed some were obvious uh, most of them were not even the one which were obvious uh, were obvious to be known but not to be followed Now by that I mean what I mean is uh, that uh, those are uh, some rules which we are aware of right we get frequently uh those 
he hearing from our friends or uh, our family or the people around us right uh, the influential people or the motivational people but we are not so frequent in following those we have been hearing those out we are aware of that just but we are not uh, executing those or implementing our daily uh, routine or daily lifestyle based on those so that is how we are not uh, able to generate an impact out of those so this way uh, this video will be helpful as a reminder and on the other side the ones which are not so obvious like for example for me uh, uh, a 4% withdrawal rule or boiling the ocean were not so obvious or uh, uh, this Pareto principle uh, was also not so obvious so these are some things which we get to know and uh, the point is uh, just not to know the things but to implement these otherwise how we are gonna get uh, affected or improved by this so in case of any impact we uh, want to generate on on life or uh, career or uh, uh, money finances uh, right or or any other things which might be uh, an important part of our uh, daily life we need to implement this rather than just knowing this but the first step obviously is knowing so in that way this video might be quite uh, useful at least it is to me but i'm sure it is to others as well so uh, we are gonna check out some other videos as well then please uh, till then please subscribe to our channel and i'll see you in the next video till then take care bye bye